this is it. The trucks have arrived. The desks are getting offloaded and the phones are getting hooked up. It is our final mock draft Monday right now for the 2024 NFL draft here on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, friends and neighbors. Chiefs Kingdom around the world. Our final mock draft Monday is brought to you by FanDuel right now. Make every moment no- more. New customers are getting $150 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Right now, that's $150 back, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get started. We are going to get started. It is our last go. This is Chris Clark from Chiefs Corner. He's got it all for you over there on the QB matrix, uh, <laughs> metrics, uh, the QB stats, the contracts, all of the capology, everything that's going to go into after we select this draft class, as well as getting you ready for his perspective on the prospects. I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting, where we put out all of it. The draft guide has everything in there, even evaluations right up until the last minute this weekend. I just finished another guy. You're going to get advanced rankings. And for those of you who already purchased it, there will be a fresh download on Tuesday or Wednesday for our final grades over at rogueapc.com. Use that code LOC to get yourself discount. You can also get the athletic matrix. I am the creator and monitor of that. You can see it on NFL 33. You can see it on RGR football where me and the rest of the staff are running everything down for you. Check it all out. Lots to go in as we get ready. Positional need is always something. It always affects everything. We're going to take it slow. We're going to slow everything down today as we get you ready for what is the real world scenarios for the Kansas City Chiefs. We're going to start our last mock draft right now. Yeah, and if you want to go have some fun, go look at Friday's show on Freaky Friday and go give us your votes on YouTube, <laughs> please. I would like to hear who you whose draft you would like, mine or Ryan's. Yeah, are you Team Chris or Team Ryan? Uh, I think I know what's going to happen, but that's okay. We're we're going to have some fun either way with it. As team we Ryan get is ready, getting killed right now, but that's okay. I, I I can imagine. You know how dare I actually go get the best tackle in the league? Um, yeah, okay, that's all in right. The league, okay. <laughs> I, in the, I'm sorry, in the, in the class, but hey, eventually, you never know. Um, Fair enough. You know, there's a whole pedigree there thing that we can talk about later once he's on the roster. Uh, a lot to come, but it all starts with how things play out in front of them. Uh, there's no crazy trade up to number three like the San Francisco 49ers did a few years ago without even knowing who's on the board there. We're going to take it as though Brett Veach is drafting for his job, which most GMs in the league are every single year. Maybe not Brett this time around, but that's okay. And we're going to take it slow. We've got it set up very similarly, except we're going to take pick by pick and see what happens and walk you guys through everything. Make sure you like and sub and hit the bell right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe on the podcast feeds at Spotify, at Apple Podcasts, at any audio platform that you can get. You can get us free five days a week plus, and you can get all the inside little bits on our insider tip line there at 816-357-8781. That said, uh, I'm not going to do the Roger thing, but uh, just like the you ding the bell at the stock exchange, we are open for business. And let's go ahead and get it started. Caleb, Drake, Rome, Marvin, Malik, Jaden, Joe goes, Fwaga goes, Fashanu. Three tackles in a row in this scenario. I don't think that that's far-fetched. I think there could be a run just like that. And there could be. The thing that surprises me is New England went wide receiver, which is going to throw things off for us down below probably a little bit. Uh, I would expect to start Jayden... this over? Huh? No, I'm good with it. I just It's still going to be a little bit different than what I would expect. I cannot see New England going into this draft and not taking a QB. I, I agree. that They have to. I mean, uh, and I have my my – Druthers about who I think that will be. You can see that over on NFL 33 this week, folks. Um, that said, or big trade names back, I guess. going. I- exactly. I, I don't think that's going to – I think there's going to be a quarterback in slot three no matter what. Yep. Um, but for our intents and purposes, obviously the top wide receivers all go. Um, it is very similar to what I have where Neighbors is number three. Uh, and I have still – my board will come out here tonight – at the latest tomorrow, as I finalize it, and I still do not have my number one wide receiver picked, they are that close. They have the same grade on my board, and I just have to make a decision. Um, so that's coming. Um, the tackles go. I know which way I'd go. Yeah? Yeah. 
I, I think yeah. you proved that Friday. So folks, yeah. make sure you go check that out. The the Vikings on the clock here. I think this is a pretty pivotal one. I think this is going to end up being quarterback. So I don't feel the need to throw, try to trade up there without Alt and Adunze on the board. I don't feel any need to try to get up here right now, except for the fact if we see another tackle go in the next two picks, I start to get nervous. But I expect this to be quarterback, quarterback. Well, and it's interesting because you look at Joe Alt, Fuaga, and Fushanu all going three picks in a row. Uh, so mm -hmm. you're getting your run on tackles. So let's go ahead and hit resume, and we'll take it down to about 15, see what we get. Quentin Mitchell, Latu, Dijon, Byron Murphy, J.C. Latham. So now we've got another tackle off the board at 15. And sorry, I went one extra with Jared Verse at 16. I still don't know that I really feel like trading up is really what you want to do here. But the only reason that I hesitate is because my number three tackle is still on the board. I, I have uh, Fautano as number three overall. So there's two tackles that have gone past him. I would inquire of the Jacksonville Jaguars what it would take. Um, I don't know that Doug's going to get you too much, uh, you know, uh, green graces, but it can't hurt say, to look. I don't know that they would trade with the Chiefs, but we'll see. It's not like it's the Bills or, or the Broncos. You know what I mean? That's true. It takes 64 probably. Okay. So you're giving up two picks. You're giving up a chance to get a wide receiver in the second round, unless you're going to trade back into the second round with a 2025 pick. Um, we can try it. What about what about the third from next year instead of 64? No chance. No, okay. They ain't having it. Okay. You could do I don't I Yeah, no, I ain't doing that. You could do a second next year and keep your second this year. You're gonna have to talk me into one me into that because my gut says stamp hat. I'm fine with that, but you're the one that said that he was your number three tackle. So I yeah. I mean, roll roll two more and let's see what we get at 19. Mm, still there. We're still there. So I'd, I'd inquire of uh, old Sneed here. No, they're not going to take next year's third. Okay. That will get – you could do that. Yeah, I don't see a way to do that unless you're giving up the second-round pick, and then you're going to have to try to get something back. The reason that it's important is because – there are more wide receivers in this draft. Brett Veach just said the other day how impressed he is with the depth of the wide receiver class in this group. Yep. And that's why it's got me thinking more and more about my scenario from Friday and then this scenario is something that, that might have to be under more consideration this week as we get closer to the draft. Um, I think Fatano's worth going up. 19 would probably be at the outer reach, but I got to tell you, the next three picks off the board, he could go any of them. Yeah. So you can move up with the second. Sorry, you can move up with the second. Uh, you can try to get some picks back. I mean, it's just kind of all over the place at this point. Um, I don't want to give up the second. I would give up a third, but that's about it. Yeah, they're not going to do it for a third. Would you give up the third next year too? Would you do that trade and try to get back 83 or 99 maybe? I don't know. They're not going to give anything back. I mean, you get one, 154. I don't know. We could roll a couple more choices and see what happens, but we we're pushing down. If we don't get it to Tyler Guyton would be next, uh, most likely I, followed by Kingsley Sumatia. I don't know that you could get – I don't know, and this is reality. I don't think the Dolphins are going to trade with you, so I think the only chance you would have is at 20, and I'm not so sure the Eagles would. That's fair. So there he goes, 19. Okay, so we were in the right place. Um, I, I still don't think I would give up both first and second round picks just to go up to 19. Chiefs may feel differently. So with that said, we've seen what the first round has given us in terms of options. When we get back, we're going to finish out the rest of this first round, and we're going to get to what the Chiefs are going to get on the board.
It is certainly playoff time, not just for the draft in the NFL, but the NBA, the NHL are in full swing. Hockey playoffs have begun. And if you want baseball, it's just getting started. FanDuel is the best place to get every bet in all the time. Right now, new customers are getting $150 back in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Means you don't have to win. Win or lose, you get $150 back. Uh, you can bet everything from slap shots to slam dunks to those home runs that are just starting to get going on the app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for right now? At FanDuel.com slash locked on, you can get your first bet and make it an automatic win at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And while you're competing, you might as well get into it with your friends, your neighbors. Heck, I, I'd probably do this just to get at my wife a little bit more because I am a little bit competitive. She will tell you that. And hey, if you have a competitive side, you want to get at somebody, Monopoly Go is the way to do it. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded 150 million times. It's a great twist on the Monopoly game you know, but you don't have to play just one board. You can play hundreds of them. And crazy locations build all kinds of amazing cities that bring you real money. And the best part is you can compete with whoever, whether it's your, your spouse, your best bud. Heck, give your kids the run for the money. It can't hurt. I can charge them rent. And on the iconic properties and make all that money. I can I can even do some heists there and take away some of their vaults from myself. The leaderboards are kind of fun because they give you the biggest Monopoly tycoons out there. And it's not just for the sake of competition, but you can team up with friends and people around the world in time tournaments and earn huge rewards. So go get the game, Monopoly Go, and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Folks, the ultimate Locked On Mock Draft is up over at Locked On Sports today. That is our 24-7 feed. You can go get that. Uh, you can go watch it on replay. It's in the channel. Go like, sub, and hit that bell as well. As giving us a like and checking out Chiefs Corner and checking out NFL 33 and RGR Football and certainly Rogue Analytics for your draft guide needs. Before we get down to actually crossing names off the list, as we've done here, so as we continue down the first round and we're going to get to the other picks folks but this is this is the, the crux uh johnny newton goes off the board probably the only the second defensive interior guy that i could even see going in the first round and i'm not sold that he will uh followed by adonai mitchell a guy that we've talked about for the chiefs quite a bit and now the eagles are on the board yeah and i what think at this point i think we just let it roll for another couple picks and see where we get maybe get to 25 and see who's still available at this point uh Adonai mitchell is kind of surprising you still have uh the other lsc wide receiver um brian thomas jr brian thomas that's what i was going to mention he's the one guy right now the tackles i don't think are worth trading up for at this point he's the one guy that i still have on the board right now that is worth a trade up i mean we could look at what's it going to take to get to i don't know a third round pick i think you were right let's let's roll unless it's a third next year. I mean, I could possibly do that. Try it twice. Okay, they don't do they don't want it. What about 221? You want to try one more? No, I, I would keep the picks at this point. Okay. We're not going to get the value. Roll it another couple and let's see what happens at say 24 or 25. Mims goes and there goes Brian Thomas. Yep. Now, those are two players that I would hope we would get a chance to fall. J.J. McCarthy comes off to the Vikings at 22. I'm sorry, 23. Uh, and now the Green Bay Packers are on the clock. And I just don't see anything worth going up to get. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Six tackles off the board now. Is that correct? Sounds right. One, two, three. Yeah, six. Okay. So tackles are pretty much gone. Your, wide, your top five wide receivers – depending on where you have Mitchell or gone. Um, so I think, you know, at this point, you kind of let it roll and maybe at 29, look again. Yeah, maybe. why not? Barton McConkie goes, Kool-Aid goes. At 29 is the Detroit Lions. Um, again, I don't have a target in mind worth trading away capital for. Yeah. There's two, there's three picks in front of us. Uh, I, I feel like you're going to get uh, a Troy Franklin. You're going to get a Tyler Guyton. You're going to get a uh, Kingsley Suamataia. Uh, there's enough viable candidates there that I think we, we can get to 32 and see if we have a trade back option. 
Chop goes. Uh, Jordan Morgan goes. I do feel he'll likely go inside. Uh, and Jackson Powers Johnson. Um, we could go back to 35. Certainly within the realm of possibility. What is this, What does it get us is the question. Um, I want that 66 and I'll give him the 95. Yeah, that's not going to happen. 51%, you never know. Bada <laughs> boom. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know how realistic that is, but there we go. So we resume the draft, and the Chiefs are on the clock at 35. Peyton Wilson goes off. Not a first-round talent in my mind. Tyler Newman comes off at 33, followed by Bo Nix. The, the Patriots now get their quarterback. Um, so that is about – and it comes down to one of the guys that I mentioned being at the top of, of what P PFF feels the board is in uh, Troy Franklin. I just don't know, knowing now that we have 64 and 66, is Troy really worth that pick? I'm not sold on that. I would probably look at Guyton here first. We can take Guyton. He's there. So you also have a chance to get Keon Coleman, Roman Wilson. I mean, different guys. We've already talked about Braden Fisk as well. I agree. I think that we have to stick a wide receiver or tackle at this point. Um, so do you want to go Guyton and get your – I keep the Oklahoma thing rolling? Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Or do you go with – Sumitai has actually dropped way down on their board now. Yeah, I'm not sure why that is. I, I do think he is probably – a top 50 pick. So do you think he's better than, than, um, uh, Guyton? I think he's probably better right now. I think Guyton may have the higher. Which direction do you want to go? Sumit I, or do you want to go Guyton? I would go Guyton. Okay. Guyton is the pick. And now you're sitting at, so that takes care of tackle. Let's pause it. Troy Flanken goes to the next pick. Zach Frazier, the center. So now you're at 64 and 66. You don't have a third round pick. So now you have a chance to go get a wide receiver. You want to split How far do we want to let it go? Let's try to put a package deal together to get to around 50 and drop back to like 75 or 80. Split 64 and 66, basically. Okay. So maybe Indy, maybe. You want to try the Giants? Sure. Keon Coleman, J Sanders, Roman Wilson, Ricky Purcell, Braden Fisk, Michael Penix, Jalen Polk. Dang. Yep. Xavier Leggett. Sorry, I missed the, where I was trying to get to. So now we're at he 50. He was on the clock at 50. Sure. Give it a shot. They don't, so, they don't have a high enough pick, though. So, no, I don't think that'll work there. What do you want to get to then? I want to 52? go up to about 50 ish. Yeah. I mean, which is where that we are on the clock. Yeah. So. We can give up next round, next year's third. No, no. Forget the Eagles. The, they don't have the picks that I want. I want to get to 50 and I want to get to 70 or 75. We got to find the right team at this point. Trying to move up and move down. Like 51 and 84, maybe 52 and 83. And give me 99. <laughs> and I'll give you 131. I can roll with the punches. I mean, we could try that. We could. There and you we go. Could. So the Chiefs have now moved back up to 52, which I, I think the good thing about this scenario here, folks, is that if Brett Feach is going to move around the board, I think he's going to do it more than once. If he can get people to talk with him, to make deals, I think there's going to be a chance. So when we get back, we're going to make the rest of these selections here on our final mock draft Monday as we get ready for this Thursday's actual NFL draft coming up here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. 
Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even easier and faster. Prices on Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Lots of different games you could be going to, whether it's MLB, could be NBA, could be NHL. Lots of different places that you can go and get, or lots of different types of games you can go and get your tickets for at Game Time. Save up to 60% off buying last minute ticket for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, or much, much more. Saving even more with the exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Toggling all-in pricing shows you the total price up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Not only do we have a twenty four seven feed, we're going to have bonus episodes for you every round of. The NFL Draft, you can get everything that we have to offer over at RogueAPC.com. You can get all of our clips, all of our information here. And make sure that you are prepared as much as you want to be as we click off. Situation is as this. We did not get a trade-up done. We were able to trade back and get some value. We are now back on the clock after having taken an offensive tackle at 35. We're back on the clock at 52. I think this still has to be primarily look at the wide receiver talent and then I think we have to go edge or interior. And Chris is going to set those up as he brings his mic back on. And we're going to take a look because this is a draft that is not, I'm not bereft, but is definitely slanted towards the offense. So given back at 50, if there is a player that we know that we have a connection with that can affect the defense in a positive way, we have to consider that as well. That's the reason I bring up the big edges there. And the guy, the two guys that are on the board here, one is, is a guy that I like, Ruka Roro, but there's also a guy that's been very, very connected to the Kansas City Chiefs in Marshawn Nealon. It's not a stretch to take him at 52. I think that is a possibility. Xavier Worthy is a very, very, very comfortable for Chiefs Kingdom to get used to. I think they like the idea of speed. How do you judge the, the lay of land here? I think you have to look at your uh, – where do they rank in your – rank? where do they go in your rankings is really what it comes down to. Do you have the same type of ranking on them? If you do, you have to go with a player that fits the position of need the most. And to me, that's worthy, and it's not even close. It is very close on my board, but it is worthy. Um, I have Roro probably five or six picks below him, and I have Neyland very close to Aurora. So I think right now, Worthy would be the top of those three. Uh, scroll down and just make sure we're not missing anybody else. Tez, Wilson, Xavier, McMillan. Yeah, I, I think I think that we can safely do that. That's on my board of these three prospects right here at the top, Xavier Worthy would be the highest on my list. Yeah, and according to the average draft position, it's at 48. We're picking at 52, so they don't rank him as high for PFF, but I still like I still like the pick at 52. Fair enough. We're going to come back. In speed. And because of the trades, we're going to come back at 83 and 90. So yep. I say go for it. Okay, so Worthy is a chief. And we're giving you bonus minutes here. This could be a slightly longer episode. We're, we're going to call it supersized today uh, because we're trying <laughs> to get through that all. We're going to have supersized content for you all week long. Don't forget that as we tick through. And uh, next time we stop, Chris, we can probably put it on to let it go faster too. Yep, I think uh, that's a good I, call. I think in the end, what we've been able to do is, despite trying to move up, we weren't able to get that done for what I, I felt was enough value. Uh, we did miss out on Troy Fautanu, but we were right in the right place right there, about 19. Uh, and what we've been able to then do is move just slightly back, spread our picks out. And we're still going to end up having one extra in the top 100 than we originally had. We do have a bigger gap going from 99 down to 159, but I can live with that. So we're back on the clock at 83. I still think wide receiver is something that they would look at, even though they already drafted somebody. 
Oh, uh, well, sorry, I didn't mean offensive tackle. I meant interior offensive line and what defensive mm-hmm. interior and edge. So right now, Jalen McMillan is the best prospect based on those positional groups. Um, man, According that's tempting. CFF. Yeah. Now, the only problem with Jalen McMillan is I do believe he will eventually be a three-position wide receiver. But to get started, he's going to be in the slot a lot. Yeah. And that is problematic Which, if your name is Sky Moore. Well, it's problematic if you're the Chiefs because you already have a lot of slot receivers. So that is problematic. Um, I mean, you could still go call Cooper BB. You could solidify the interior of the offensive line. Honestly, I, I think there's there's guys that are better fits than BB. I do like him in a power scheme, but in terms of the volume of running zone, uh, yeah, there are guys that I would like to be more athletic. Uh, his name so starts with a P and ends in U N I. He may be our next selection. Pooney. Yeah. Uh, Chris Mah- Mahogany is uh, a nice player as well that I think can play in either scheme. Uh, really, it- it's about impact. And so I would take your filters off and let's just see all the players that are available. Um, don't want to skip out on corners either because if if somebody with some tenacity is there, you might be able to get an- another guy in in here in the third round that you can foresee becoming, oh, Kyrie Jackson. I mean, he's six foot three. He's got the reach. He's the the prototypical body type corner that the Chiefs like. Renardo Green is a guy that has the luxurious need tenacity and get in your faceness that they like. Those are two options here that, given that we've given away, traded away a, a Pro Bowl, if not all Pro caliber player, those would have to be in consideration in the conversation right now, in my opinion, for the corner spot. I'll let you pick. Who do you want? We're coming right back at 99, so we're not going to be off the clock very long. None of those players will be there. I think it comes down to I, – I like Kyrie Jackson just slightly better than than Green. I think Jalen McMillan is is a viable candidate. It's just hard to, to squeeze him in. But do we ever want to be in the position we were in last year where you don't have enough targets for Patrick Mahomes? I, I say no. So if you think that's the best value, I'm fine with taking Jalen McMillan and walking on down to 99. No, because I think that the next pick will go to another offensive player that could help. So I am fine with taking the corner here. Okay. So let's take the corner there. What that accomplishes is spreading it out. And again, in a draft that is not as heavy on the the defensive talent side, we, we got a player that's a good fit and that has the talent that we want for the Kansas City Chiefs. And now we have our pick of two interior players that I feel could both help this roster. Dominic Pooney from Kansas and Christian Mahogany from Boston College. Uh, I, I'm not going to be the homer make the decision on this. I think I would actually have the versatility of Pony rated slightly higher, but not by a long shot, so your call. So you're, you're still saying offensive line. I'm looking at the tight end. I'm not. There's four of them right now. They can get by. I, there's a guy later in the draft that I'm really, really excited about, and we can try to get him if we want. Okay. Well, also I'm the go... most athletic tight ends are going to be later round guys in uh, Ryman from Illinois, as well as uh, Johnson from Penn State. I took mahogany. Okay. Cool. And now we wait. If you if you pause it and put it to fast, I bet you it'll go faster for you. There we go. Just for this long run down. So the the players that I think have to be able to fit into. Right now, for the three-peat run and beyond, are guys that complement Travis Kelsey and not replicate Travis Kelsey. So when I'm looking for a couple, he better not have gone off the board because I want to surprise Chiefs Kingdom with somebody that I think is a better version of Noah Gray at a lower round than Noah Gray was selected. His name's Westover. He should be listed as a tight end. Sorry, I was trying to see. I thought I saw... I don't know where it was, but I saw T- Devondre Sweat. I was just wondering where we went. Uh, sorry, you said Westover, mm-hmm. tight end. Should be. Tip Ryman's still there. Mm. Westover's Westover. way down the board, so they, he's not they are taken. way they are way low on him. So we can probably wait till two twenty one. That's fine. Um, in reality, he is a fourth or fifth round player because of his versatility. Like I said, I think he's he's better right now than Noah Gray was. Look at that 116 for Trevondre Sweat. Yeah. He's going to be a day four guy. 
uh, I'm day four, day, day three. three guys, fourth round guy. <laughs> sorry. Um, I, I think that's pretty clear to us all now at this point. Okay. So what do you want to look at? Your boy, I, I'm open for business. There. The best value on this board right now is Zach Zinter. Potential Pro Bowl level guard. I know we already took an interior player, although it had we taken Pooney, we have a guy that could have played outside or been a swing. Zinter is is very much my version of this year's Trey Smith in that he should have gone in the second or third round. And if he's available here at 159, that's, that is a screaming run to the podium for me. Man, that's a double dipping at interior offensive line, but uh, can't uh, can't help but pe- protect Patrick. Can Mahogany play more than just the interior positions, or is he stuck at the interior? I don't I don't think he has the footwork to go outside, but they might give it a shot. They've surprised okay. us before. Andy Heck might might be able to trade him up. So, do you want to go Zinter? Uh, that's that's likely what I would do, unless you see a, a weapon of some kind. Um, I don't think the interior defense is, is there. I think. We're pretty much to the point where edges aren't going to come into play. We got the corner, so I, I feel like we're in good shape. Okay. Zinter is the guy. And here we go. Man, Bell is still sitting there. Holker, Holker is still sitting there. Yep. Either are options. I prefer Holker uh, just because I know that he can split out, line up wide, uh, do Murphy. a little bit more. Grayson is the little brother. Uh, nothing against him. Uh, Gabriel is, is a guy that I'm sure probably went in the day two area uh, that has some upside. Uh, so I, I don't think we'd go there. Okay, where We you haven't taken Bell in any of our drafts before, though. So I could see that. We're off the board on an interior offensive lineman. Anybody your, in... Your boy is still there, though, I think. Your tight end is still there. So oh, is yeah. Ryman. Ah, interesting. We're we're gonna get my guy last. Let's let's do that. If he's there last, we'll take him. If not, not a big deal. So, best player available right now that you think can help the Chiefs in some way. Position group. I'll tell you whether he's good or not. Uh, it, it the problem is you keep running into the same position groups. I mean, you could take a running back, uh, mm-hmm. safety. I mean, you could look at it, you could double dip at wide receiver, but is it going to really give you the other thing that you're looking at 173 is you're also thinking special teams. So, correct. Um, anybody on here stand out to you? I mean, if you want a home run hitter, uh, you just passed uh, Isaac Garendo. He is the fastest tailback in this draft. Um, at 173, I don't have a problem with a running back. If you chose to do that, fine by me. Tyron Hopper is, I think, Matrix 2 in the linebacker group, so easily placed teams for you. Could grow into it. Um, a local talent, you like that as well. Um, linebacker or running back? Pick Which one. Call? Right now, I want. I would have gone the opposite, but hey, you you got it. Got got yourself a Tiger. I like it. We got a Jayhawk and a Tiger in this draft so far. I'm, I'm digging it. Let's cross our fingers. The my guy survives. It's going to be a my guy draft in the end. Tell me. He should. There we go. The next Noah Gray, a more versatile and I think more natural pass catcher version of Noah Gray in Jack Westover from the Washington Huskies. Let, let's put it this way. We got a Michigan Wolverine who just won a national championship. We ended up – did we get two? No, we passed on McMillan, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm losing it here. Uh, we ended up with a Washington Husky. So both teams in the national championship, we got a player for. We end up with Xavier Worthy in the semis. So we're picking successful players from successful teams. And I think that's important as well. But we didn't get a Jayhawk like you thought we did. So No. Okay. Well, that's my fault. I forgot about that. Could have had just, Pooney. I'm just saying. Yeah, we took Mahogany instead. We've taken Pooney multiple times. So I went a different yeah. direction. And the big thing is, is you have continuity on the right side of your offensive line. Could Tyler Guyton play left? He certainly can. Can Wania play left? He certainly can. Is there a scenario where Juwan Taylor goes to left tackle and you have Oklahoma Sooner Creed Humphrey at center, a Tennessee volunteer for now until Wania Morris takes that spot in, say, a year from now, given contract discussions. You have another Sooner at guard then, and then Tyler Guyton's your right tackle, and you have three Oklahoma Sooners on here? That is a distinct possibility. 
Yeah, and in that scenario, you have Mahogany and Zinter just sitting there as bench players, uh, although I guess one of them could be a starter uh, once Tooney leaves. So that is the draft. That is our last draft of the of this season. Definitely threw us though. for a loop. We tried to play this as close as we could to the to the vest here, folks, with the way that this was going today. Uh, maybe not the most explosive draft that we could have for, but I don't think any of us are going to be as happy with the uh, with the reality of the Chiefs 2024 draft as we were with uh, Freaky Friday's drafts. So hey, <laughs> we we try, we try to give you the entertainment on Friday and the reality on Monday. It sounds like a weekend to me. Well, and the big thing that we have to remember is we can take a look at these drafts and we can say, okay, this, I mean, this is the way it plays out. We'll have to see what the NFL thinks. We'll have to see where these players go, but Veach has been doing a great job drafting. So I have a full faith that this will be a fun draft for the chiefs in 2024. I, I think you're absolutely right. Now, folks, we're going to have coverage here on the locked on network, the whole draft. I will be live on RGR, the whole draft. You'll be able to find everything. We'll be doing podcasts every single day of the draft here Unlocked on Chiefs to break down everything for you. We're going to get you some bonus content. When and if the Chiefs move around and we do expect there to be trades, we will give you instant breakdowns on those as well. So be prepared. This is going to be a long weekend. A lot and there will be some more stuff on the text line as well. Absolutely. That is probably your first notice this coming draft weekend. If you want in on the inside, get on that text line 816-357-8781 and be prepared. It's been a long road. This has been a fun go. There is still time to get the draft guide if you want it, the athletic matrix if you want it. Use the code LOC. Get yourself a discount. Had a ton, a ton of people download this year. We very much appreciate it. Not everybody's using the discount code, though. So I, I really appreciate it. If you want to buy the guide, please use the discount. Get yourself a little bit off there. It's LOC at rogueapc.com. It's been fun. It, I cannot believe the draft is almost here. It's less than a week away at this point, and it is going to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait to see who Kansas City adds and uh, if there's any fireworks, because there could yeah. still be some fireworks. Maybe they can get a trade-up done. We're going to see, folks. Let yeah. us know what you think. If this is the way it fell, how would you feel about it? Give us your reaction down below. Let us know uh, from Friday. Are you Team Chris or Team Ryan? I, I want to see somebody vote for me. Uh, You've got a couple. Right? Okay, well... We'll keep growing it. You all enjoy your Monday. We're just a few days away. We'll have everything ready for you for the run up. Matt Derrick will join us pre draft as well. It's going to be a fun one. The newest batch of Kansas City Chiefs are on their way. And we'll talk to you.